and we're back with some more Washington Capitals franchise mode in FHM 10 and in this one we have the start of year number eight as we get through the Hall of Fame inductions for year number seven and then get into the start of year number eight we have Brent Burns, Dale Hunter, Ryan Suter and Jonathan Quick into the Hockey Hall of Fame and this year is really going to be a deciding year for quite a few people first off <laughs> the goaltender situation between Kachekov and Knight obviously you have Knight five more years left on his contract making almost eight million dollars and then you have Kachekov whose contract is coming up this year and he wants to test the market okay <laughs> before he wanted around five mil but I guess that kind of answers that question unfortunately <laughs> I would have liked to see which one of them was able to hold on to the title of our starting goaltender but it seems we might have to trade Kachekov no matter what now <laughs> because he is intent on walking to free agency it seems and there was another guy I think it was Kartai who doesn't want to renew yeah but you never know maybe if we can get their happiness up there then they might change their mind but I doubt it so we're gonna have to hope that Knight is able to perform this season like he did during the playoffs last year of course he only played seven games because we got out in the first round but he had a 938 save percentage in that round so if he can play like that during the regular season that'd be great that'd be awesome but during the regular season especially last year he was not good at all 893 save percentage and a minus 13.22 goals saved above average definitely not the guy last year Kachekov was during the regular season but then the coach for some reason decided to put Knight in during the playoffs and then the other guy who might be on the hot seat this season is Guy Boucher now the reason I say that I, I know he's he's gotten our team from being you know bottom of the barrel to contenders in just one season during his first season here but uh, ever since then it's just been a sort of a slow backward spiral his first year here we made it to the third round which was great but then of course the year after that we got kicked out in the second round that's when we had 56 wins on the season and then the year after that 45 wins on the season this past season we got kicked out in the first round by the Carolina Hurricanes so it's a little disappointing to say the least and I think depending on what happens this postseason that might also determine the future of Guy Boucher because he was great to get us into the playoffs sure but now you know now that we're there as a team who is going to be the coach that brings us to that next step is it Guy Boucher I don't know I do not know just yet I hope it is but last year's playoffs was very disappointing so we got to have a really good performance in year number eight to make up for that I mean ideally a Stanley Cup but we'll take it one step at a time so I guess with that we will simulate up to the regular season of year number eight all right so we have to set captains now as we did trade our former alternate captain and Alexei Protas who is now with the Philadelphia Flyers we traded him to Chicago because Chicago offered for Protus and they offered us Charles DeMay but he is now on the Flyers due to uh signing their free agency as his contract was expiring at the time so let's see who is going to be alternate number two uh I'm thinking Crystal he's been very consistent during the playoffs not only in terms of grade but in terms of his points as well he had 13 points in the first year that we were in the playoffs 11 points the second year and then six points last year and he's been very very consistent with his regular season point getting 46 his rookie season then 52 53 53 60 58 practically a guaranteed 50 or 55 maybe 60 point guy he's been here for almost the entire GM mode so at this point I consider him a veteran so I think he is worthy of getting the second alternate oh no Ryan Lynn injured in the preseason with a fractured rib out one to two months well it says four weeks on here but one to two months on there so to the injury list he goes it's an unfortunate one to start the season now Will Reynolds as well two or three weeks so during the preseason the coach actually had Ivankovic playing which is odd because usually they go with the best talent goaltenders overall and in three games played for Ivankovic he had an 892 save percentage and in three games played for Spencer Knight, a 947. Keep that up, buddy. So I think I'm going to send down Ivankovic just for now. I want to see what Kachekov does, but I'm pretty sure at this point, considering the fact that he does not want to renew his contract, that we are going to be trading him by the deadline. And we have a bunch of other players up here right now just to see. And I have a bunch of other players up here right now. We have 33 players on the roster due to... I just want to see who we could potentially use as a replacement 
if we need to trade somebody due to cap issues. Then McCarthy down. I will send down Seostrom. So it looks like our starting guys on defense, at least until Lynn gets back, are going to be Lambos, Galvis, Cameron, Alain Samake, who gets his first shot in the NHL, I believe. And then Lev Shunov and Huang. And at forward, I will send down Lemire, Demay. Ooh, Laurent Jay, what the heck is that, man? A 39 defensive grade. Ooh, I mean, I, I want to give you a chance here, but that's uh, that's not good. Send down Rausa, Stesko, Kingerski. Sean Carrier with a 74 defensive grade and 64 offensive. Spent the past three years in Hershey. I think he might get a chance here. I'm going to send down Shilov, Royston, I think. And then pff, Laurent Jay. He's, <laughs> that 39 defensive grade is not good. Oh my goodness. Hendrix Lapierre <laughs> now down with a one to two month injury. And we're now at the start of the regular season of year number eight. And this is our roster. In goal for now, you have Kachekov and Knight. On defense, you have Lambos, Levshunov, Huang, Galvis, Cameron, Alain Samake, and currently injured are Lynn and Reynolds. Reynolds will probably be sent down after he gets off the injury reserve list. At forward, you have Afanasev, Suzdalev, Misa, Crystal, Kartai, Mata, Deruio, Kutz, Karkoni, Metcalf, Artamanov, Torpchenko, Carrier, O'Brien, and also injured, of course, we just saw Andrew Slapierre. And here's what the Lions are looking like currently to start the season. Obviously, that's subject to change based on what whatever the coach wants to do. But I have high hopes for this team once again, and I think with that, we can get underway with the regular season simulation of year number eight. Ooh, so Spencer Knight is injured. It's only day to day, but that does mean that Jack Ivankovic is going to have to come up here. And now Ryan Lynn is ready to get back in there. And I think we will send probably Will Reynolds back. Elaine Samaka has been really good defensively. He's going to go on waivers, but I think he'll clear. I hope. he's Because he's still a pretty good backup player. I would like to... Keep him if possible, but uh, you do what you got to do sometimes. Oh, he was claimed by Calgary. That sucks. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. And, oh, Sustalev was injured. I could have just put him on the... <laughs> I could have put him on the injured reserve list. And, well, I mean, then again, I, w I would have had to send down Reynolds eventually, no matter what. So, yeah, that's, that's unfortunate. But uh, what are you going to do? All right, so now we have to get Knight back in there. And then Ivankovic, what'd you do? In two games played, he had a 936 save percentage. Pretty good. Pretty good. How's Kachekov been doing? 930 so far in three games played. I mean, every, all the goaltenders so far have been doing really well. Spencer Knight in seven games played with a 921. So love to see it. But I think would now be a good time to trade Kachekov. I'm thinking yes. Because assuming that he still doesn't want to resign yet, I, I don't see any point in delaying this any longer. You know, if, if Ivankovic is ready, then I would prefer to play him over Kachekov at this point. So, yeah, I'm just going to shop him, see what we can get. Doesn't look like anything too impressive here. What about, actually, let's just scroll through the teams here a little bit and see if anyone desperately needs a backup goalie, like maybe Colorado? Nah, never mind. They're probably going to want to play two. Oh, jeez, Florida. <laughs> wow. They got a one and a half star as their starter and then a half star ability as their backup in David Tendek. Yeah, I think Florida needs a goaltender. <laughs> They're concerned about payroll. So if I retained half his cap, they still wouldn't be able to do that. Be oh, below the salary floor. Okay. I thought they'd be above. Okay. Okay. So wait, what? How does that make sense? You can't add this much salary to the payroll. Are they on like a low budget or something? Is that what's happening here? Oh yeah. They're on a very low budget. Oh, wow. They have a budget of 69.8 million. Oof, that's rough. <laughs> how am I supposed to make a trade here? Okay, I finally figured out a way how to make this work. It had to be Kachekov and the rights to Vasily Pavlinsky. He's a goaltender, so he's, it meets their need. Or Riley Kidney, specifically because he has the exact same salary as Kachekov. Anything else would not have worked. <laughs> that's how difficult this was to pull off so with that offer trade and we'll see what they say <laughs> so for now i'm gonna have to send ivankovic back to hershey but once that trade goes through he is coming right back up okay uh let's see <laughs> i'll give you like a sixth so the panthers have finally accepted our offer of peter kachekov a sixth round pick and the rights to vasily pavlinsky for the 27 year old riley kidney complete trade now, Kidney also only has one year left on his deal, so let's just see how much he wants or if he'd even be willing to re-sign here. 4.3 for three years? I don't know. I don't think we could afford that. And now we're going to call up Ivankovic. 
which means we have 24 players on our roster. I think for now, just as a paper move, I'm going to send down Mata because he can actually go down without clearing waivers. But I do want to look into trading somebody here, whether that's just flipping Kidney to another team or trading Kartai. The only thing is I, I really like how Kartai simulates. Like he's easily one of the most physical forwards probably in the league, easily hitting 200 in almost every year past besides last year. He only had 118, but that's still a lot, you know? So I don't know. I really, I feel like we should hold on to him for the playoff run. But at the same time, we are starting to pile up some forwards here and we know he's not re-signing in the off season. So a lot to consider here for sure. Maybe we flip Kartai and get another grinder in return. And another thing I really like about Kartai is his personality. He's, he performs better under pressure. So if we could get someone like that, that'd be great, but I'm not counting on it, unfortunately. All right, so we have a deal lined up here. Metcalf, O'Brien, and a fourth for Ashton Tite. I'm very impressed by him as he's only 24 years of age, good contract, 20 getting open, good defensive ratings in there, good mentally, good physically, good all-around player. He has a good personality, not the kind that I'm looking for, but like I said, those those are few and far between. So we're giving Tampa Metcalf, who he's been good, but just given the fact that he doesn't really hit too much, only 15 hits last year in 60 games, I don't think he really fits the mold of what we're trying to build here. As for Jake O'Brien, he hasn't really, we haven't really seen much of him at all at the NHL level. We've only seen him for seven games, but he has not played since November 5th. So that tells me coach isn't really playing him too much. And he also had a stint there in October where he didn't play for a few games either. And not to mention his defensive ratings aren't really that great. Mental ratings aren't there either for the most part. I mean, it's 18 team player, but that's about it. And then they're also getting a fourth round pick for Ashton tight offer trade. All right, so we actually have another trade lined up here. <laughs> Kartai at 50% of his salary retained for the rest of the season. The rights to Benjamin Josephson, who's a two and a half star potential. Two seconds and a third for Yuri Kulik at 50% of his salary retained for the next two years. He's pretty good. 18 for faceoffs, great faceoff guy. Solid offensively, solid mentally, solid physically for the most part, which his strength was a bit higher. But overall has some really nice ratings in there. Personality is not good, but it's not bad either. Last year he had 41 points in 78 games played, a 61 grade, 102 hits, 54% faceoffs. So far this year he's 57% on faceoffs. He had more takeaways than giveaways, so I really like what I see out of Kulik, and I think we will offer this trade. I mean, we're we're giving up all our draft picks here at this point in the GM mode, but you know what? I don't care. As as long as it <laughs> as long as it nets us a Stanley Cup, I'm okay with it. All right, good. Henrik Slapierre is finally back. And of course, that means we're going to have to send somebody down. Is anyone injured? Can I... S <laughs> All right, you know what? Just as a paper move, a paper move until those trades go through, because we are losing more players than we're getting back. So I'm pretty sure we'll be able to call Lynn back up, but I'm going to send Lynn down to the AHL just as a paper move until we get those trades to go through. He's coming right back up afterward. All right, so our trade offers to the New York Rangers and Tampa Bay Lightning have been accepted. So Olivier Metcalf, Jake O'Brien, and a fourth round pick to the Tampa Bay Lightning in exchange for Ashton Tight, complete trade. And to the New York Rangers, Ty Kartai, two seconds and a third, and the rights to Benjamin Josephson in exchange for Yuri Kulik, complete trade. There it is. So that should bring us to 22. Yes, indeed. Now we can call Ryan Lynn back up. And we're gonna have to call Mata back up at some point too. It's a matter of figuring out how to do that. But I think first we'll simulate up to December 1st. All right, so we're on December 1st. We're at 11, 8, and 3 now. And in terms of the wild card, that puts us currently outside the playoffs. I mean, there's still plenty of season left to go. We're only 22 games in. Only two points outside the wild card, but definitely not an ideal start. We might just end things off here because it's been a very eventful episode already. And we, <laughs> we have to, have to, have to be successful this year. Get a look at the stats real quick, then I think one thing's off. So Afanasev with 23 points in 21 games played. Then you have Misa and Lambos each with 21. Then you have 19 for Levshunov, 17 for Kidney. Nine of those are with us in seven games played. Very good to see. Tight with 16 and 22. Three with us so far in four games played. 16 for Kulik. And two of those are with us in six games played. Huang with 12. 11 for Suzdalev and Artamanov. 10 for Crystal. 9 for Carrier. Carconi and Galvis, seven for Torpchenko and Cameron, six for Kutz, five for Derubio and Mata, three for Lin, really only three for Lin in 10 games played. Wow, 
He's having a bit of a slow year so far. And then LaPierre with one, really LaPierre with one. So LaPierre and Lynn <laughs> having slow starts of the season so far. And then Alain Samake with one as well. And then in goal, you have a 904 for Knight in 13 games play. That's a bit ugly. And then Ivankovic in six games played with an 899. Come on, guys, get it back together. And we'll just get one look at the team stats. Goals for per game, we're 10th in the league with a 3.5. Goals against per game, we are 7th in the league with a 2.77. Face-offs, we are 9th in the league with a 51.2. Power play, we are 9th in the league with a 23.2. Good to see. And the penalty kill, we are 7th in the league with an 84%. So nothing is standing out as a weakness, really at least in terms of the team stats, but I would like to see Knight and Ivankovic do a little better, and I think it's just about uh, stringing some wins together here. Maybe get some luck in there, but luck can't carry us the whole way, so we <laughs> gotta make sure that we, you know, just keep a steady pace and do that. We should make the playoffs, but that's frankly expected of this team. So with that, I think we'll end things off here, and the next one, we'll get through the rest of your number eight with your Washington Capitals.